the project today is we're going to be setting up an otter pelt. So this otter isn't real big. I'd say it's probably a medium. Um, I trimmed off the face just behind the eyes. So you can kind of see where that was. And um, so from, from that point to the base of the tail, it's about 29 inches long. And um, this came cased where it was like a tube. So what I did was I put my um, skin board down the center and opened up this pelt from the neck to the base all the way down the all the way down the center of the belly all the way down to the base so i started here made a little nick put my skin board in there and ran that right down the center you can see how that was done so you just take your knife, you nick it, you run it blade up, and you follow carefully right along the line all the way to the bottom. Now, what we're going to do with these is we're going to close the front legs. And this particular skin doesn't have any rear legs that are left on it. So we don't have to worry about those. Um, I also marked kind of like the natural coloration line going down on each side. Because when I nail this out, I want to make sure that I kind of keep that area um, even. And I also did a hash mark on this. So my, oops, so my skin will match up. Um, I did a hash mark going across on each side, so I've got the, that will that will match when I'm going to nail this out. I hope that makes sense. So what I did for the legs was I just trimmed this right around what um, was there. I didn't take out much at all. Um, this was what was there originally. I just trimmed that little edge. Um, kind of like the shape of a football and we're going to close this up by furnishing so some skins you split open not otter otter you want to shut that and when you get it shut it'll nail out nice i closed this side already so um that will that had a little uh rip right here so it made it a little bit more of a whatever but it closed up okay um, I also closed up right the ears. So I took the ears out and closed that up. Um, just cut down around each side of the ear and as equally as I could on each side and I closed that up. So that this will nail out nice and flat when I get that going. So you you can see the natural color line here of this otter a lot better when it's open. So the center back is real dark and going towards the bellies, it gets quite a bit lighter. So we're also going to mark the center back of this skin um, with a pen. And uh, once I get that done, uh, we'll be ready to nail. I have my otter pelt where the center back is marked now. Um, and I closed my leg holes up and I closed my ear holes up. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to wet this skin and stretch it. And what we'll use is I have a solution of water and, um, a solution that's called easy leather. And I took a, you know, a small basin of water. It's probably about a quart. And then I put in maybe about a third a cup of that easy leather. And it helps, I think, give a little bit more stretch to the skin. So what you do is you take your wetting brush. It's not a scrub brush. Um, this is a natural bristle brush. 
It's actually a shoe shine brush. You know, it fits my hand really well. Some people like to use a spray bottle. I like to use a wetting brush. I think it's a little faster and it gets the water where I want it to go. So we're going to wet, the, wet this real well all the way down to the tip of the tail. And we're going to, then after it's been wet, we're going to let it, we're going to turn it to where over on itself. Where it's called booking. Kind of like a wallpaper thing, I think. And uh, just let it sit. I like to massage that water into the leather as it's resting. And that way I know it's in there real well. So I'm going to finish wetting this. And uh, then we'll come back after the next step. I'd like to show you um, my nailing board. So I've got several pieces of this. I cut it to uh, different widths because it's easy for me to use. It's called Homosot. It's a cellulose fiber paper that's pressed into a board. It's also called Soundboard. And I have a 4x8 sheet of it on a big table that I use. And then I also have smaller panels that are easy for me to use um, for smaller projects. So what I do is I use a piece of craft paper. I double it up, put it on my, um, my, my panel that I'm using, <laughs> and I draw a straight line down the center. Um, I've marked this here at the bottom, and then I did another line um, right there, five inches over on each side, so I kind of know um, my width and I marked it up at the top uh, 36 inches this isn't going to get 36 inches but at least I have my center line and I've got my width um, five inches or seven inches across on each side I think I said five but I meant seven so we're going to start nailing out this otter pelt what I did was I splashed a little water on there it's not a big deal but um, what I did was I hand stretch this and when you talk about hand stretching before you put it on the board I know I need a lot more width than this on this particular skin sometimes you stretch for length sometimes you stretch for width sometimes you stretch for both but for this I want width and so what I've done is both of my hands I use and I pull this side to side and then I also pull it in length. I pull it a little bit diagonally and I'm teasing the leather to stretch as much as possible. I did that about five minutes ago and then I re-wet this skin again and it's very supple, it's very soft and now it's gonna be um, good for me to work on. So what I do is I have a tacker. Um, I use an L19 tacker, and there's a couple that you can buy. This one happens to take three different sti size staples, so it's kind of nice. I'll probably be using a quarter-inch staple today because this is a pretty flat fur. And I am going to start at the bottom um, right across the back legs and I'm going to nail up to the top. So I'm going to put a row in down here and then I'm going to stretch up and then I'm going to stretch both sides. So I'll show a little bit as I go on. Another thing I like to use is a aluminum push pin. The, these are um, really sharp and I think this is probably about an inch in length. And these are not office supply stuff. You can get them at Samuel Bauer, but you want an aluminum push pin. These hold up a lot better. So what I've done is I put a push pin in down my center in a couple spots. And then those hash marks that I had, I stretched my skin out side to side and I pinned it on those hash marks and tried to keep my skin as even as possible 
And now what I'm going to do is going to, I started nailing down here at the bottom and I'm going to continue nailing and pulling um, the sides nice and straight all the way up to the top. So I usually do one side and then um, go to the other. So it'll be done in just a few minutes. But you can see how those push pins kind of help keep it taunt while I work. It's all down. So I ran around the perimeter, pulled those push pins as I stapled, and it's nice and flat. These were the leg holes. This was the ears. And this has a little bit of a ripple right here, but that will dry nice and straight once it this dries. And I nailed all the way down to just about the tip of the tail. So I took the push pins out as I worked, and it helps. A lot of people use a nailing pin, which is just a long um, stainless steel nail, and they don't use staples, but I prefer staples. So however you decide to put your skin down, that's up to you. You can Some people just use push pins, and they use a lot of them. But I like nail, nailing with uh, a stapler and... This will turn out nice and flat when we're done. So what did we get? This measures from the nose to the base of the tail now about 32 inches. And I got width right about 18 about at the bottom. And yeah, that's 18. And across the shoulders we've got 15. So not too bad. The otter pelt has dried on the board and it turned out real nice. The next thing I like to do is kind of see how my pattern is going to lay out. Um, obviously I have to take the staples out and take this off the board. So there's one of two ways. You can use your staple lifter like this and take your staples out but what's kind of nice with this craft paper is you can lift up the craft paper the double layer and your fur at the same time and it pops the staples out pretty easily but before I get too far on that I want to show you what I like to do at this point where it's nice and flat I like to lay my pattern out and if this were a hat um, like an Alaskan trapper hat, I could do the brim with the hair running to the back. And then this is the back of the hat. And then I've got the sides kind of laid out like this. And then I've got the extra ear flap panel like that. And I've got the other one marked here. Um, I'm going to have to piece this from this section in here at the back, which is fine. But this would make this would make one of these Alaskan trapper hats. The other thing that it'll do is I like to take my pattern and I like to make them out of a clear um, plastic uh, because then when I lay it out on the fur, I can get a good idea where it's going to lay out. Like that's my mitt. It might be kind of hard to see. It's got a little crease right here, but that's my top mitt. And this is the thumb. I like the thumb towards the center of the skin. And the little finger would be towards the outside where it's lighter on that coloration of the otter. And then this is the inside thumb. So that would go, I'd have to flip it, but that would go up at the top. So I've got enough room to get a pair of otter mitts out of this. And what's kind of nice is when the pattern is clear, if you take your fur up off the board, you can literally lay your pattern right on your fur, and you can see your fur through it, so you have a good idea what the coloration is going to be and how things line up. And um, you can use a pen to mark your pattern on the backside. Um, a lot of times I'll use a chalk 
so whatever you decide to do but um yeah so this is going to be ready to take off the board and i'll have to decide what i'm going to use for it and then when i get that done um i'll tape it and then cut it so we're going to take this the rest off the board see how easy that worked now i have to hand pick out these little staples but that's no time at all and this is what the first side looks like the first side has a little some little um creases in it maybe and i'll brush that down and then mist it with a little light water so kind of glaze the fur brush that in and uh, then i'll lay my pattern on it Here's my mitt, you get the idea. I can lay that on there. So this is gonna be how my mitt's gonna be on the fur. And the likewise with my hat, so I am sure it fits and I get the coloration I want. Hope this helps. I wanna show you how nice this looks after I gave it a brush. So I took all the staples out and then I brushed this down with my wire brush and this right here that's where that leg was the front leg right there that's the other front leg so see how nice those closed up and how good that fur looks so there's the back side there's the front side there's the back side I mean the front side there's the back side and also up at my um top by my ears see how good that looks so this is going to make a really pretty brim when it's going to have this coloration on both sides and on the dark center so now what I like to do is I like to take water and this takes just a second I'm going to give it a little spritz with my water bottle and then I'm going to glaze this this is called a wet glaze and you brush it's not holding still for me but you brush the hair all going in the same direction from the head to the tail, obviously. And that's going to get rid of any, like, little colics. Because this probably just got squished a little bit when I nailed it. And um, so, yeah, then it'll look great. That'll dry for about 15, 20 minutes. And uh, then we're going to lay out our pattern and cut it. The plan all along for this otter pelt was to make a trapper, a Russian trapper hat. And I did lay it out a couple of different ways. You can see all my different pen mark swiggles. But I decided this was the best layout. Um, I marked it and then I cold taped the edge that I'm going to cut on. Uh, cold tape is a adhesive backed fabric tape. And you put it down, you just unroll it, push it down with your finger. And if you don't like where it's at, you just it just comes up. But it stays on while, it's, while you sew. And it keeps the edge of the leather from stretching. And then when you cut this, it's a nice edge because you've got, it gives good support when you cut this. So here's my brim. I've got my top flaps. This is the band, the hat band piece. Um, that's my under flaps, and then that's my crown. And I'm going to use this area right here on both sides to um, make my uh, flaps a little bit longer. And uh, well, I'm going to patch that in. It should look just fine when it's done. So next step is to cut this out, and then we're going to sew it up.